All right, so if we were in class, we'd be working through an activity on some properties of real numbers. I'm just gonna do a little bit of summarizing in this video. So types of number sets, your natural numbers, if you think about them, are kind of like the first numbers that you learned when you started to count. Like you've got one toy, two toys, three toys, four toys. Whole numbers are a slightly larger number set. They add zero to your natural numbers. And then integers was when you got to like middle school and you learned that not only are there whole numbers, there are also negative numbers as well. So integers add the negative numbers to your whole numbers. Rational numbers look like a little bit confusing in their definition, but it's basically any two integers that are being divided. So if you take any two numbers out of your set of integers and have them being divided, say that you've got like negative two over one. That's an integer. Yes, it's also just negative two. You could have one half, 34 over negative 567. All of those are rational numbers. And even decimals, like just because it's written 1.3 doesn't mean it's not a rational number because that's equivalent to two integers being divided, 13 over 10. Or even something like 1.3 repeating because that's one and one third or four over three. So they can be rational numbers even if they aren't necessarily written in the form p divided by q. If it can be written in that form, that makes it a rational number. Irrational numbers are basically measurements of quantities that cannot be written in rational number form. So something like pi, it represents an amount, 3.14159, but it continues on forever and ever and ever and ever without any pattern to it. So that's irrational, something like square root of two. Again, it's a decimal that never ends. There's no pattern to it. You can't predict the next digit. And then real numbers contain all of those other numbers. So real numbers encompass within them all the rest of the number sets. They correspond to a point on the number line. They represent an amount or a quantity. This is a nice little illustration, it kind of shows you your smallest number set is your natural numbers with some examples. And then the whole numbers contain those natural numbers plus zero. The integers contain the whole numbers and the natural numbers plus the negative values. Rational gets a little bit bigger, contains all of those other ones. And then rational and irrational don't overlap because my rational numbers can be written in the form p divided by q, where p and q are integers, and irrational numbers cannot. Pi over 4 isn't rational even though it's a fraction because pi is not an integer. And then all of these are real numbers. Everything. Except non-real complex numbers which would be like imaginary unit i, 2 plus i, which may or may have not talked about in the past. Order of operations is the agreed upon order in which to perform mathematical operations so that everybody gets an agreed upon result. So you may have heard the abbreviation PEMDAS before, where please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, not my favorite abbreviation, but if you've heard it before, that relates to order of operations. And the first thing you do in order of operations is work inside your grouping symbols or your parentheses. They're not always parentheses. It could be brackets, could be top of a fraction, bottom of a fraction. Those are groups as well. So start there. For example, if I was looking at this expression down here, I would start by working on my expression that's grouped together inside there, four minus two, and I would perform that operation first, make it into two. After I've simplified in my grouping symbols as much as I can, 
I simplify any exponents or radicals. There are no radicals here. So I'm going to do my exponent, 2 squared, 2 times 2 is 4. So that's E for exponents. If you're thinking PEMDAS, this excludes radicals, but those are also at that same level of importance. Then you perform your multiplication and division. And the key here is you have to work from left to right. This is why I really don't like the PEMDAS abbreviation because people think that because M comes first, you multiply everything in your expression before you divide. That is not true. Multiplication and division occur from left to right. So if I had multiplication and division in here, I would work on whichever one is furthest to the left in my expression and then perform the one that's further to the right. So say I had something like this. I would do my division first, and then I'd multiply. It's not always multiplication first, then divide. It's left or right. And then same with addition and subtraction. Look at them, find them in your expression, do whichever one's furthest to the left, and work to the right. So back to my expression over here. Sorry, I got focused on the left or right thing. We'd be working on our division or multiplication. I don't have any division, but I do have this multiplication, two times four that I'm gonna do. And then finally, I would perform my last operation, addition, and get 17. And here are a few additional properties that we have that are true when adding or multiplying numbers. Commutative property says that we can add values in any order and it's not going to change the result or multiply them in any order and it's not going to change the result. Associative says that regrouping in addition or multiplication doesn't change my value. Identity says I can, if I'm talking about identity of addition, I can add my identity element zero and not change the value of my expression. Or if I'm talking multiplication, I can multiply by one and not change the value. In terms of inverse of addition, I can add the opposite sign of my number and it gets me back to zero, my identity element. In multiplication, I can multiply by my reciprocal and get back to one. And then closure is one that we don't talk about a ton. This is probably the first time you've heard about it. But basically it says the real numbers are closed under addition or multiplication. If I add two real numbers together, my result's still gonna be a real number. Or if I multiply two real numbers together, my result's still gonna be a real number. They don't magically turn into imaginary or non-real numbers. And then the distributive property involves both addition and multiplication. Essentially says if I have a value times a quantity that involves addition, I can multiply as long as this is still following order of operations. So this has to be the first power. I can multiply my value times each of those inside and get the same result.